Hey, Dad. Yes, son? I've been feeling a bit sick recently. Actually, a little bit depressed. What do you do when you're down? Depressed? Son, have you ever heard the tale of the little bitch boy? The little bitch boy? <laughs> What's that? The little bitch boy was a slave to his emotions, son. Whenever he felt bad or sad, he would stew in his emotions and say that he was depressed. The little bitch boy would stay depressed because he would whine about his problems instead of solving them. The little bitch boy was not an effective man. However, the little bitch boy's father was an effective man. For the little bitch boy's ancestors had something known as a framework, but the little bitch boy grew up in a world where there was no framework. A framework? A way of viewing the world, son. Everything is a framework. In some things, <coughs> everything is a framework, <coughs> and some frameworks work better for some people. The little than bitch others. boy had the worst framework of all, which is to say, none. Am I the little bitch boy, Dad? What? No, I love you, son, and I wouldn't disparage you. I'm not sure what you are. I was the little bitch boy, son. You were the little bitch boy? Yes, son. And I hated being the little bitch boy, so I turned to my father for advice as to what to do. And so I did what he did. I took all of my feelings and I bottled them up. I shoved them deep down inside until I could feel them rotting inside of me. So you're saying men should ignore their emotions and women no, should be No, son, please. Keep listening. In following my father's advice, I realized that it wasn't quite working And so for I me. changed my framework. I started being emotionally <coughs> honest with about half of my feelings and dismissing and shoving away the other half, almost at random, really. And that's what I should do. If I feel depressed, I should bottle it up, but only sometimes, just randomly. Yeah, that's a great idea. <coughs> no, son. Again, you're missing my point. I don't know what's right for you, but what ended up working for me was being strong most of the time and weak sometimes. And I could differentiate when to be strong and when to be weak based off of how I felt when I was randomly dismissing and acknowledging my emotions earlier. Yeah, Dad, that is far from a perfect framework. And you still haven't told me what to do. When I was doing that, I was working out for myself when I should be strong and when I should and be And in weak. doing that, I found a framework this that worked out This is fucking stupid. All of this is fucking stupid, son. I'm already growing tired of the cadence of my voice. It's a lot harder to try to find out how- What you need to do, son, is you need to find a framework that works for you. It can be any framework. You can pick one at random, really. What matters is that if you don't have a framework, you need to start following a framework and commit to it like you would commit to a woman. It's very easy to just call something stupid. Are you saying women are frameworks? Why, why are Everything you so hung up on this? Everything is a framework, son. People are frameworks. Politics is frameworks. Morality is framework. All frameworks have flaws, but that's not the point. The point is that any framework is better than no framework at all. Any framework is better than no framework? Okay, I barely know what you're even talking about when you say framework, but I'm pretty sure I can think of a few worldviews that are, are objectively worse than other worldviews. Find out how to express a thought on your own. But if you believe and commit to that terrible framework and try to act it out, you if you don't pick for framework, yourself, then you'll that never find terrible. anything out about anything. And you'll also never have to commit to anything, which is appealing. Which is why nihilism won, but is also why hmm. nihilism See, it's won is a dead so end. Well, I what I will say, say that. is that passive nihilism is a dead end. Humans tend to be creatures. You can't of know belief. everything in faith. Passive in the nihilism gaps. is a framework in so much as an anti-framework can be a framework. I'm already growing tired of this video, and I'm not even sure, really, what I'm trying to say. But I if have you faith, never attempt son. To follow a framework, then you, from your own experience, will know nothing. All you'll have to do is follow the advice of other people whose frameworks are stronger than you, who have tried to If you to want to be able to think frameworks. for yourself, instead of only being able to follow advice, you're going to have to commit to a framework in the same way you would commit to a woman. Ooh, you keep saying that. It's not a good look. It's not a good aesthetic that you've chosen as an example here. When I met your mother, I never thought that she would be the perfect woman for me. Realistically, there is an infinite number of possible women that I could have and been. And all of them would have had their pros and cons. But the point isn't to find I knew the your mother woman. was a good choice, but I also knew that she was not You can perfect. find a perfect woman, but without commitment, And you can be matter. perfectly committed. But if you're committed to a terrible woman, then that won't matter either. You are far too hung up on women as frameworks, Son, Dad. it is painfully easy to deconstruct as you are doing now. 
it is much more difficult to posit something and have it be challenged. I'm using life partners as an example, but you could say the same with jobs or hobbies or friends. My point is that it's a lot harder to believe than to disbelieve, but in believing, you make yourself stronger, or at the very least, more defined in a certain direction. Faith makes you more defined. Commitment makes you more defined. Yes, you can be defined by negative frameworks, that's definitely possible. But if underlying your frameworks there is a meta-framework that wants to find the best framework, then I have faith that you will orient yourself towards the one that works best for you. The point is to not pick the proper framework that works for you on your first try, but to orient yourself towards the best framework that works for you based off of trial and error. Yep. Do you ever define frameworks? No. This conversation isn't making me feel any better. It sounds like you're just wordily dismissing my feelings. This framework about frameworks is is just another framework, right? Like, why do you waste so much time thinking about this stuff? Why couldn't you just give me some normal advice? Maybe I'm trying to work some things out here myself, my son. And yeah, I think saying I've thought about this too much is a fair point. But, within the context of this conversation, you have asked me for my thoughts. And now, I'm going to give them to you. You wouldn't be here if you weren't at least interested in them. A fourth wall break is not clever anymore, Dad. You have to get with the times, jeez. But, this one, right now, is to me. So I'm aware of the deconstruction, what matters, and yet I choose the construction out of the deconstructed parts. I could say parts. that there is no that point is the reconstruction. to any Or, I could say and perhaps that there is faith in this point and have faith will make that there, there will be a point. point. Well, what if I don't want to be defined? What if I don't want to play by the rules of a framework, huh? What if I want to just remain an amorphous blob, ever-changing, impossible to pin down or criticize? Don't forget impossible to love, son. This is the attempt to reconstruct the deconstruct. We must choose to make sense of things ourselves, or else we will be possessed by a framework that is stronger than our own. I think I get it, though I, I still have the suspicion here that this could be easily interpreted as terrible advice. It's not exactly advice, my son. It is meta-advice. Be open to changing your mind but not so open that you throw away a good woman, and not so closed that you hold on to a bad one. Uh, well, I don't want to do that. I don't want to play this game. Having no framework you can't is still choose a framework. to not play the and game. If you don't so actively that. choose to adopt a framework, then one will actively choose You're to adopt you. You're not my biological son. In terms son. of this depression, if you don't choose to have a framework about this issue, then this issue will have a framework that is the status quo and you will be dependent on pills for the rest of your life. The status quo works very well for some people, but it does not work well for everyone. And that is why the status quo must be actively chosen and not passively so, accepted. So, the core of what you're saying here, underneath all these words, is just, I shouldn't be on pills. Is that, is that what you're not saying? Not necessarily, son. Just because something is accepted and amplified by the status quo does not mean that it is right for everyone. An office job works for some people, and it doesn't work for others. Kids and a wife work for some people, and it doesn't work for others. These are frameworks I have chosen, but the most miserable people are those who have passively and unwittingly adopted frameworks that work against their own interests. Oh, that's why this conversation is on a politics channel, right? Right, son. The status quo is not really our enemy, because the status quo is still a framework. Our enemy is the apathy that props up the framework. The status quo is the sickness that infects those who don't have the framework. And replaces the passive anti-framework with the active dominant framework. People who think framework. that they're bucking the system by choosing not to adopt a framework are actively propping it up <coughs> by being possessed <coughs> by it. <coughs> our enemy is not the sickness, but the diseased. The infection of the status quo is not a fault of the status quo, it is a fault of frameworks. Frameworks infect. Frameworks are diseases. Advice you can't is choose an not to be diseased. You must pick your disease. Whether you like it or not, diseases already run through your head. You must pick you one. Are to already stick hopelessly you will sick. live that disease. You, you are will already love that hopelessly disease. sick. You will you identify are already with hopelessly the disease. sick. If our disease was the status quo, then we would still be infecting those who claim to not have frameworks. <laughs> Thus, we do not blame the status quo, we blame the victims of the status quo disease. But none of this is really about politics. It never has been about politics. This conversation or this channel? Let's look at it another way. In order to make art, you need to have a framework. Art is the expression of a framework, emotional communication of frameworks. You'll never make art if you do not accept a framework, 
but if you accept any framework and start making art about that, then you will know how to make art. Then you will change your framework and make different art. But dad, let's be real, you don't have a framework. You don't make art about having a framework. You make art about not having a framework. You make art <coughs> about being passively <coughs> consumed <coughs> by stronger <coughs> frameworks. <coughs> That's a fair interpretation, son. But you can also look at it as the attempt to orient myself towards a genuine framework. An, An exercise, exercise for, for the, the schizotypal. Schizotypal? So this is just advice for the mentally ill then? We're all mentally ill now, son. What happens when the frameworks dissolve? Everyone is mentally ill now, son. Culturally, we are going Culturally, through the same process of we're going of through the same process of disintegration and reintegration. Ah, I see so typos. We are all with we their Probably alive. why we should start listening to them. Deeply a son, creatures. and don't you get started on romanticization yes, of mental illnesses. If one oh, medicates away the symptoms of sickness, and only it becomes sick, a lot more difficult to articulate sickness now, doesn't it, son? And one must articulate a problem before a solution. That's a fair interpretation, son. Is, but you can look at it as a genuine attempt to orient is, oneself the towards the proper the framework just by the trying them all out. The what health. else are you supposed to do? All right, I've got it. I figured out the core of your advice. You want me to talk about my feelings at random uh, and just ignore half of them, but take half of them very seriously. Have we reached the conclusion to this to this conversation? No, son. That's just generally the path I took. What I want you to do is find a framework that you think will work for you. And then I want you to commit to it and work within it. Whether it ends up being the one you die with isn't important. What's important is that by adopting it and working within it, you are learning. <coughs> <coughs> huh, okay, I think I can do that. I hope you can, my son. So I've been sick for a while now, and it's why the only video I've produced in the last two weeks has been 30 seconds long. But I've also been sick for a while now. I still want to talk to you, because I have faith that me talking to you is still going to be important. Because it is important to me. Because when I look at you, when I see what I've made, I see something beautiful, and I lose sight of beauty too easy. And all this talk of frameworks and meta advice melts away in the face of beauty, and you stop wondering if you're a meta modern man and just start being a man. All this talk and overthought and meditation on meditation on medication, all of that melts away in the face of beauty. Because in you, I see pride. And it's not even pride in myself. I'm glad that I set you on this path, but I don't take credit for the path. It's rewarding to see how you've grown. And I hope we can grow together. <coughs> I need to eat some chicken soup.